Hi everyone, this is a brief overview of WIDA, which stands for World Class Instructional Design and Assessment. And there's 39 states in WIDA right now, you can see on the map. Uh, this is important to know for our English learners. Um, and how are students identified as English learners? Well, every student who comes into a school in Illinois for the first time, whether they're kindergarten or high school, if they haven't been in an Illinois school or another WIDA Consortium uh, state school, um, need to take a home language survey. So this is given to families and the family should indicate if there is any language spoken in the house other than English. If there is, the student is required to take a screener test. So some of you may give those screener tests. Uh, some of you I know are studying for the ESL endorsement. Uh, there's a brief training you can do to do that. And if on this screener test, if they score below a 4.8 um, out of six, a six is a perfect score, the student will be designated in the state. So and there's a state database, it will, uh, that student will have the label um, English learner. Um, the score has changed a little bit over the years. Um, it is one point, it, at one time it was 4.2 and then it was five and then they changed the test a little bit. So then they put the score to four, it's right now it's 4.8. So, um, so once a student has been designated an English learner, that student has to take the access test and the access test is made by WIDA. That's another thing that WIDA does. Every year, it's given generally in February, usually in February, although this year I don't know what will be happening, but that uh, is given in February and the student must take it even if that student is not taking any ESL or bilingual classes. Um, this is a state requirement. The state monitors that data, which is also part of the district's report card. Um, so if a student has attended school in any state, um, if you went, go back into that map, uh, the student has come from, for example, Wisconsin or um, Florida, Montana, then they would not have to take the access. If they come from another state where it's not, the access is not given, they will have to take a screener, a screener test to see if they need to have an access score. All right. So once a student has taken the access, um, then eventually you'll get a report like this and you can see that the access is organized in language domains, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. It's given over two days. And um, sometimes the scores for all the domains are very similar. You might get a, get a student who has three in everything or two in everything, or you might have a student um, who gets a six in one thing and, and a one in the other. As you can see, this student that we're looking at is highest in listening um, and the lowest score is in speaking. Um, and then there's a composite. You can see it says at the bottom, it says overall, we call that the composite score. This is really important information to share at IEPs. If you have an English learner it has an IEP and there always has to be, according to state law, if your school is audited, the school can, you know, is considered non-compliant if they do not always have a um, ESL certified teacher at an IEP. So this is something, again, you could do if you are getting your ESL endorsement. So uh, what you'll be doing is going to the WIDA Can Do Descriptors um, website, and this is in your Blackboard, this link, so don't worry about copying this down. At the Toward the bottom of the page, you're gonna find the original edition of the Can Do Descriptors. There's also Key Edition, another, there's another set of uh, descriptors called the key, key uses, excuse me, and they are the same, it's the same information, but it's organized differently. It's organized by language use instead of language domain. By language use, it's the language of explaining, narrating, uh, recounting, and arguing, which is great, except I find it a little um, more confusing. I, I think it's better laid out in this original edition where it's laid out by speaking, listening, reading, and writing. And you can see that the different grade levels are listed, so you'll click on the grade that you are interested in. Uh, that's your specialty. Um, I'm just using the sixth grade, for example, right now, excuse me, sixth through eighth grade, so the middle school can do descriptors. And you can see there's descriptors um, for what students can do at the different levels. So this is based on their access scores. So if you have a student then, and then their access, they have a level one. This is things that they can do in listening and speaking, or if it's, you know, level, whatever level that they get, you can see um, there's also in reading and writing. So this is for your students. So you can use, um, you would generally use the composite 
to guide this, the composite score. All right, so now just looking specifically at level one, because your first assignment will be differentiating your lesson plan that you've written for level one students, and you would use your grade level um, and look at your lesson plan and then look at what English learners can do. What are you asking in your lesson plan and what can English learners do? So for example, um, if in your lesson you're asking students to write a five paragraph essay or to write paragraphs or complete sentences or do presentations, remember that level one in general is at the word level. So level one students can supply missing words. They can copy words. They can use words to label. Um, so these are things they can do. They're not at a, a level in English of writing full sentences, but you could write partial sentences for them to complete. So this is where you're going to have to differentiate your lesson um, and see you know, what it is you're asking students to do and what you need to do differently for your English learners. All right, so this, this is a very important tool, these um, WIDA can do descriptors. Now, for those of you that are already familiar with WIDA, and if you want to look into something else, uh, just for your own enrichment, feel free to go farther down the page and there are some new English language development standards. It's the 2020 standards and there's some good stuff in there. You might want to look at it if you have time. And if you so if you click on those English language development standards, you'll see here that you can um, download it. It's free, the 2020 edition. And here's just a little um, gives you a little uh, quick uh, blink at this. Um, I didn't there's you know it goes through all the grades, but here's kindergarten grade one, two. It gives you some language samples, some more detailed proficiency descriptors. It gives you a little bit more detail of things you might do in certain um, subject areas. You know, it gives you a little bit of like what is things you can do in language arts, um, things that you know, things language specific things you can do in social studies, science, and math, things like that. Um, so here, for example, just included this one. This is a language sample. I believe it's a third grade language sample, and you can see the teacher has um, annotated a little bit just to uh, evaluate what the student is doing and things the student can work on. The student has provided a very nice kind of graphic there. Um, and so this is just optional. I wanted you to know it's there. There's a lot on the WIDA website. Um, the WIDA website is, there's another link to of three videos you'll be watching, and that was, uh, um, those are developed by WIDA um, three different teachers and three different classrooms in elementary, a middle, and a high school. And they're really, I think, great examples of how you can different, differentiate a lesson really effectively for English learners. And that's, that would be a good lesson for all kids. So I hope that you find those useful. I hope you find this video on Lita useful. As always, please reach out. Let me know if you have any questions. And take care. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.